what one thing I wanted to ask Brian was, you know, like you said, you were set up by Malcolm in the middle, but that's not nearly what Breaking Bad is in terms of an actor's role. Right. Yeah, Brian, was it killing you all those years, like when you're doing these, you know, like you do a bit part on this one, or like you were on Seinfeld and people don't even know that, now they realize it, but, you know, is it killing you because you know you're a great actor inside and that you're... You just the, the public doesn't know you, and Hollywood and you doesn't really recognize want you. to have that opportunity to show what you can do. Well, you ca you said the key word, Robin, because the only thing that actors really need and want is opportunity. If they get a chance to walk in the room, then that's they, up to them. But if you never get that chance, it's 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 hard to have a career. Isn't it amazing how many good actors there are who never get that chance? Unbelievable. Yeah, and all the acting classes that I've been in, I've seen brilliant actors mm. right who can who i've never seen again i see guys on broadway you know they do okay but yeah. they, they never break through to the next level of movies and all this kind the, of the stuff the reason is there's a component that actors fail to understand or completely embrace and that is if you have talent let's say everybody has the same talent right you have talent you have perseverance and you have patience but there's a component that you absolutely have to have in order to have a, a successful career as an actor writer or director and that's luck right you cannot have, there has not been a successful career in our business without looking back and going, oh, that was a lucky break, and that was a lucky break. I had two. You're points. right. If you hadn't gotten mm. that small part on X Factor or whatever, X, X Files, Files, you would have yeah. been, you know, you would have been screwed. I did. I wrote a movie for my wife, uh, a little romantic drama. What's, her, what, what's her name? Robin. Robin what? Robin Dearden. Is she a, a famous actress? No. No, oh. but we met doing an episode of Airwolf. Do you remember oh, that yeah, show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With uh, Jan Michael Vincent. Jan Michael Vincent. Yeah. He's doing oh really well. God. Oh, Jan. Oh, my God. Poor fucked up dude. Yeah, we used to have him all the time on the show. But... Oh, I don't know where he is now, but... Is he still alive? I... Yeah, he's alive, is he? I think. Well, that's a miracle in itself. It is a miracle. It, yeah. it was it's such a shame because... Well, it's funny because we did this thing, and, and they would try to drag him to the set, and he was always late, and poor the late Ernest Borgnine, who was such a sweet guy was uh, always very professional, and he blew his top and is like, come on, you know, even with handlers, you know, Jan And that must have killed late. you. Jan Michael was, he had his own television show, and you're saying to yourself, look at this guy, he doesn't yeah, appreciate exactly. it. Exactly. Uh, you, you see actors struggling, and they get a line here, a line there, and you see a guy who just threw it all away. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. It's awful. Yeah, yeah, it really is. So you were saying you met your wife, so you wrote a, 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 a thing for well, your I wrote, wife. I wrote a, a, a movie for her for a, a birthday present. And then and she read it and goes, oh, this is fantastic. When are we going to do it? And I thought, oh, shit. I thought, <laughs> Never. I, I thought I, I could just write this. Right. You know? So then I started, it was put away for years. And then I thought, okay, I'm just going to go do this. So I raised some money, got some friends who put in money. How much money do you need to raise to make a decent movie? But Well, back then, we, we shot it on 35 millimeter film. Right. Now I would do it digitally. Right. Um, but we I had 300,000. Okay. So we went out and I kept delaying it. Because I'd get an actor, I'd lose an actor, and, and we kept delaying it, delaying it. Delaying. Finally, I said, we just got to go. Went, left L.A. For, for three weeks, shot the movie, came back. I was in editing for three days, and my editor, my uh, agent calls me and says, we have uh, an audition for you. I don't know if you want to get it. I know I, I need it. I'm broke. Right. Okay, it's for X-Files. Right. I happened to look the part. I had a big, nasty Fu Manchu mustache and, you know, sideburns down to my lobes, you know. And yeah. I thought, oh, okay, I could do this. And that was the episode that Vince. Wow! Wrote. If you had been too busy with that movie, exactly right, you would have blown it. Do you need to when you go in on an audition? Do you need to look like the character? You know, they say, "Oh, the director can use his imagination." That's bullshit, right? You've got to go in looking like it. Yeah, I always wanted to go in looking like it. But if you're if you're playing a farmer, you don't want to go in with you know a business overalls suit. and and you know with straw <laughs> hanging. You don't out want your to go too far, and, right? Barefooted, you <laughs> but you've got to look a little bit like the part, right? Yeah, to get a sensibility of the part. Right. So that you don't force them to try to use such an imagination. They go, yeah, I can, I can see him in a suit. Do you have one of those uh, roles that you turned down that you're really kicking yourself in the head for uh, doing? No. You don't even have that. You have no regrets. I, uh, no, because, you know, the thing, the thing that I've really worked on over the years and I've become really good at now, and I think for where my real talent lies, is identifying really well-written material. Right. I that's, read, that's tough. That is the thing. I read the script of Argo, and I thought, oh, my God, this, this is, gonna be is good, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah really Little good. Miss Sunshine. I played a one-day role in Little Miss Sunshine, but the script was so good, I convinced the the, the two directors, Jonathan and Valerie, Jonathan Ferris, and, and, uh, I, that I should do this. 
you probably you probably can't believe the level of scripts you're getting now because yeah, you're sure you read a lot of shit. And, yeah. and any actor who wants to make it has to do a lot of shit work because you, you want to act. You yeah. got to get make a living. Yeah, there's plenty of times when you're clerk three, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, you know, and you know security, you're good security guard. So go back to this. You, you see, so you're a kid, you're a child actor. I'm going to get to the part where you start getting laid because that's fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So your child actor, well, your, your father, your father. Well, yeah, okay. You won yeah. a couple of uh, commercials. Yeah. Your father flakes out. He becomes a drunk. Your parents get divorced. Your father, <laughs> like, did sort of a, a sad acting career. Where is he now? Is he still alive? He is. And, is and he you, acting? Still? And you didn't no. see him for like ten years. He booked out on you. Yeah, I didn't see him from when I was twelve to when I was twenty-two. Wow. Are, were you pissed at him? Like, were you like, what the hell did you? Do? I didn't know what I felt. To be honest with you, why I, do you think that is? You just blocked it all out. Um, because it just happened and, and conditions were the way they were. So as a kid, you just go along and you don't know why things are happening, but you guess that's the way it's supposed to be. Not a birthday card, not a birthday present, not a phone call. Yeah, no, not much. Now, how do you reconcile no. with a guy like that? It takes, like it takes patience and desire. He called you or did you call him? We, my brother and I called him and we Isn't got Isn't that together. unbelievable? He never would have even, he, he never would have gotten in touch with you. I don't that know. That doesn't drive you insane. Why did you and your brother even contact him? Why didn't you just say, fuck you, we, we did just fine on our own? Um, I think I think it was, uh, uh, we, we. my brother uh, was also an actor. He went back to UCLA and studied theater. And I think it was I, under the guise of, I think we were thinking of getting into acting, and he, my dad was in it, and so let's contact him. And But I think truly we, we sort of wanted to find out if there was going to be a relationship there, and we we're curious as to. So, see. what did he say when you said to him, "Hey, Dad, how come you haven't uh, been in touch for like ten years?" What What did he say? His, his line was, and I believe him. He says, "I wasn't a good father, but I was a loving father," and that's like, okay, yeah, all right. What's that mean? But I, I I just think it's it's you know, parents will teach the children all the time. Sometimes it's how to behave, and sometimes it's how not to behave. But they'll right. always be teaching you. But it's a lot easier to teach them how not to behave. Well, that was, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, he did a he really did. good job. Yeah, like, he was you know. perfect. So, <laughs> wow, what the hell got you to that place? I well, where was pissed. mom? Mom left too. Mm. But did she stay in touch? Mom became someone like um, uh, she was. She was uh, always depending upon the kindness of strangers. She oh, was dear. like Blanche Dubois. Blanche wow. Dubois. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Poor you. So you go and live uh, with the grandparents. Yeah, and no, it's, it was uh, a, it's a nightmare. Right? It was an interesting uh, relationship. They they were uh, they met in an acting class after the war, right, in Hollywood, and uh, had this very fast and furious romance, and it was great. And they got married, and it's like, oh, let's have children, and you know, it was so fast and so quick. Yeah, and um, and I think my mother always resented the fact that she felt that she had to give up her show business life in order to. Too. Yeah, she resented him. Did you, so, so when you finally get in touch with your dad, he's just like, uh, you know, uh, sorry. And no, no, he was he was tearfully grateful and and sorrowful, and he's he's heaped on enough guilt on his life, right? To does he have to a whole other family? Forever. No, um, he remarried. Yeah, and uh, really found the love of his life. Right, and they were married and together for over forty years. And I was happy. To what see was it like when you went to see him for the first? Like you and your brother went over to say hi. He, yeah, it was a little n nervousness, and, yeah. and we went to our grandmother's house, and when we first, uh, it was sort of an intermediary. Was it know? his mother? Yes. Oh, and was he yelling and screaming? Oh no. No, and no. he wasn't in touch with his mother either for oh, 10 years. Oh, no, he was in touch with his mother. He oh. was. Oh, sure. I'm, n I'm talking about my dad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, sure. That's weird. And, and like, but so, he didn't ask to, talk, didn't to ask to talk to you guys. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. <laughs> the old man's insane, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> so how did you learn to be a good dad? I mean, after you get that job, well, I'm surprised you're not the kind of dad that goes, fuck these kids, man. I didn't have shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, you well. know? It's, it's one of those things you go. Okay, I don't want to do that. Right. That's not how I want to live my life. So you Is make you... you make corrections to what you, oh, you I would, see. I wish I could have a, a a video of you meeting your father after ten years and him trying to explain himself. That the, must have been a beautiful thing. It must have been amazing. Yeah. You know, had I been that <laughs> objective to it. <laughs>